Juice. Mm-hmm. Hello, Angela. Hello there. I want to look good for you. <laughs> you always look good, baby. You know that. <laughs> Oh, I, I'm, so, I'm so happy that my Valentine's Day gift gets to be you. Yes, mm. we have Valentine's Day today. Yes, and we have sex. This is Angela White. Hi. Angela, you have so many fans. Uh, I just checked, you have almost half a million followers on Twitter. Yes, sorry, just making sure they're in. They're in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're in. <laughs> So it's uh, YouTube safe. Yes. Okay. We talk about sex, but we cannot show it. Exactly. Yeah. So Angela White, uh, for everybody who doesn't know you, which is probably not many people, uh, tell us where you're from. I'm from Australia. So I was born in Sydney. I grew up on the southern beaches there. And then I moved to Melbourne in 2007 to complete my university degree. And then I stayed there because I loved Melbourne until I moved here to Los Angeles in 2016, where I now live. So I'm an Australian performer, but I'm now based in Los Angeles. And I'm also a director and producer. And yeah, I'm living my dream. It's pretty amazing. And you're not only very sexy, you're also clever. Because a lot of people always think uh, porn performers are stupid, yeah. but you are the opposite. Well, there are a lot of assumptions made about porn performers, and not just performers, but everybody that works in the adult industry. There's a lot of myths surrounding the pornography industry. And one of those myths is that the people within it are not intelligent, but that's completely incorrect. Intelligent people like sex. We like to explore our sexuality. We like to be creative with it. Um, and so, yeah, it's it's one of those things. It's an it's an unfortunate stereotype. Uh, but there, but the the art industry attracts so many different people, and I think one of the reasons for that is that everybody, most everybody loves sex so you're going to get people from all different backgrounds coming into this industry to engage in all sorts of kinky sex i even think that um, intelligent people are generally more kinky and more adventurous when it comes to sex that's an interesting theory and you might be onto something there i think that intelligent people are also we we're uh, adventurous and and we we seek novelty we always like to be we're curious about the world we're curious about sex and you know what what could this thing be like and i want to try that mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah let me have some of that so i that's that's an interesting theory and i i, I might agree with that um you know that i'm a swinger since yes. many many years and i met a lot of like very intelligent uh, people also in the swinger scene. I'll bet. Well, yeah, it makes sense that I think that intelligent people don't always um, think they need to abide by the status quo. So if the if the status quo is that you need to, you know, grow up, get married, have kids, you know, have the white picket fence, be monogamous, you know, like there's a certain there's a certain path that is the the norm, the normal path that people go on. And um, being heterosexual and monogamous is is you know one of the the one of the things that uh, that are expected from us in society. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, a lot of intelligent people don't don't ne don't necessarily. The, the, let me before I move on. Let me just say there's nothing wrong with heterosexuality. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with you know monogamy. There's nothing wrong with that. E different. I think it's boring, but well, yeah, <laughs> but it works for some people. Yeah, it works for some people, and that's fine. But I think that you have to live the life that you want to live and you have to create relationship styles and statuses that, that work for you and not, I mean, monogamy doesn't work for me um, and obviously it doesn't work for you, <laughs> you're a swinger. Um, and I think that unfortunately society hasn't fully accepted that, but um, hopefully that'll change. I think it's changing. I think it's changing slowly. I think different forms of non-monogamy are being more a more socially acceptable now not necessarily fully accepted but certainly more acceptable so that's great but yeah I'm not somebody I like to be in relationships with multiple people at the same time mm. I'm someone that likes to I, I feel like sex is an is a conversation so and I don't want to have a conversation with just one person for the rest of my life I like to engage in conversations with 
all different types of people mm. at different times. Mm. And but I also have to say that you are not normal. In a very good way. Thank in you. many ways you are not normal. Also, you are extremely successful, which is Thank also you. not normal. You are... Uh, I think nobody ever won so many AVN awards uh, than you have. Yeah, um, Dan Miller did say that I, I broke a record, or I, he called it record setting that night um, this year. So yeah. that's very incredible. So I won four, 14 AVN. Well, it was 13 awards, and then the 14th trophy was my AVN um, induction into the Hall of Fame. Which I was unhappy that you got this, because I think you're too young for that. You should Thank have you. Gi They should have given that to you in 10 years or 20 years or so. Well, that was... I was actually... I kind of had hopes that maybe in five years time I would be inducted into the Hall of Fame. So I, I didn't campaign for that award or anything. I didn't mention it. It was came as a complete surprise to me. But the, the to be to qualify to be in the Hall of Fame, um, you have to have been in the industry for 10 years, which I have been. And also, I think you have to have made a significant contribution. I don't know all of the all of the variables, all of the, the criteria. I mean, you definitely uh, deserve it, but I, I, I wish they would have waited for this <laughs> one. So, but 14 awards or 13 plus one. Yeah. Um, can you even name all the, all the categories? Well, the first one, obviously, that comes to mind, which is the, the biggest award of the night, for me, at least, was Female Performer of the Year, which is a huge honour and, oh. and something that I did, I did really, I did really want it. But, you know, there's a lot of amazing women in the category and all the women in that category are deserving. So I had hopes, but no expectations. Mm -hmm. But when I won, of course, I was overjoyed and, and I'm still overwhelmed by the whole experience to be honest. I'm overwhelmed with gratitude for all of the love and support that I've received, um, that I received from AVN that night but also from the industry as a whole. I think that I've really been welcomed into this industry and like and being welcomed into it like I have, I've never been welcomed into any other industry before. It's, mm. it's really touching. So F Female Performer of the Year and then Angela Volume 3 which was my big movie for 2017 garnered uh, six awards, which was huge, and one of them being Showcase of the Year. And then my boy-girl scene for that with Manuel Ferreira, one best boy-girl sex scene. That was a really special scene. Actually, he introduced us a yes, he few did. years uh, ago. Yes, I had no idea who you were until Manuel introduced me to you. And I, um, I had a lot of catching up to do because you have done a lot in your career. So once I found out about you, we had, we had a dinner together mm -hmm. and I had no, I had no idea that you were so kinky. Like you were so, <laughs> you just, you're just such a gentleman. You're just such a lovely person. And yeah, that was, I was really happy to meet you because very soon after, maybe it was a, maybe a week later we had, we had sex for the first time. It was soon. It was soon after that. That we, yeah, that we it was. Together for and it time. was for your own production, yes. uh, which is a double turn on for me. When I mean, I love shooting uh, with you, like today with uh, uh, Eddie Powell. He's a great videographer. Yes. He does amazing work. But I particularly love shooting with you, for you, because it makes me feel like a whore when you <laughs> pay me for having sex with you. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So you like feeling like a whore? Absolutely. You like feeling like a dick for hire? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I I love shooting my own product. I love producing and directing my own product because it means I get to choose everything. I mean, obviously I have a choice when it comes to other people's productions, whether I do or don't want to work with certain talent. But when it's your own production, every little detail is your own choice. It's everything from the location, the wardrobe, the male talent, you know, <laughs> what kind of scene it's going to be and for how long. So I like to have that control and get to have the sex that I want to have. So thank you. And I remember there was like, it, there was a, there was a ghost, you know, so I don't believe in ghosts, but mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember we were all fucking and I had an orgasm and the light started flickering and the light went out. <laughs> that was, um, that was interesting. <laughs> but today we are shooting for new sensations for yes. Eddie Powell. Yes. And he shot a scene with you and me like a year, a little bit over a year ago. That was such a, an amazing scene. And I really loved the results. So if you have the chance, check out this scene. Yeah. And now 
we have to stop our interview because Eddie is ready to take some hot, sexy photos yeah, with you. me and my lingerie. So I have to yeah. go take my pretty girls. And Steve gets to watch. And then after that, he gets to come in and have his way with me. Come in and come on you yeah. and... <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, mm. we're going to have so much fun. I'm looking forward to it. Mwah.